All right. Welcome, everyone. It's so nice to gather together on a, a Friday evening. At least it's Friday evening on the, uh, the west coast of the USA. Um, and I know there are a number of us that are scattered around. And so welcome. Thank you for joining. So I'm Debbie Darren. I am filling in for Kevin Griffin uh, this evening while he is leading a retreat. And I, I just always appreciate and am greatly humbled by his invitation uh, for me to be of a support to him in, in my own way. And I, I remember the first time, the first time he asked me if I would be interested, I, it was, it was a bit, you know, it was a lot to think about. And I was a little nervous how to fill Kevin Griffin's shoes. And he reminded me, you're not filling my shoes, just be you, just be you. And that was just so wonderful, you know, just to, to hear that and to be reminded that we come to our practice, we come into our recovery, we come into community with, with others, just who we are. And I think so many of us who are in recovery programs, choosing to live a life freer from addictions than we might have in the past and or we some of us may be very new as well those of us exploring dharma mindfulness practices and meditation we really uh get to appreciate appreciate having a community where we can share our journey and and where we can just be human and be who we are and i know in the beginning it was really hard to do <laughs> <laughs> for me at least but anyway so gratitude much gratitude for for being here so before we begin i would like to ask if there are any people here for the first time you can either raise your real hand or your virtual hand hi i think i saw action alice did i see you welcome welcome i see you're journeying <laughs> Happy that you're here. All right. So the general format of this meeting is that we have about 20 minutes of a meditation practice and then a bit of a mindful Dharma recovery integrated type of talk that I'll offer. And then after that, we'll have time for some reflections. Uh, some questions or or just being present with you know whatever our experience has been whatever shows up and I will guide us into the meditation I will leave time for your own experience to be what it is for you to really um, honor the time that you are taking to be hopefully everyone is feeling like they're in a very comfortable place a place where they feel like they can um, you can just be really present with whatever arises and passes in the mind and to know that you're doing this with many others and that everything's okay right now for these next 20 minutes for this next hour we're journeying together individually and in, in support for each other so let's begin and i'll start with um ringing the bell let me get my little timer going here um, and then i'll also close the meditation at the end with the ringing of the bell and is my voice loud enough okay great thank you thank you love those thumbs <laughs> So allow yourself to begin to find a comfortable position that will support you in this 
inner contemplation, meditation, invitation to be in stillness and and wholeness for these next 20 minutes. Allowing yourself to find a way of feeling relaxed. Feeling yourself held by whatever it is that is supporting you on this great Mother Earth. The weight of your body sensing into a connection through the feet if you're sitting and through the whole body if you're laying down inviting the the possibility of Anchoring into stillness while at the same time feeling into the sensations that arise and pass and and beginning with just feeling the sensations of the breath in the body. For this practice, it's often supportive to have your eyes closed. If it's more comfortable for your eyes to be open, allow them to have a soft gaze, a spaciousness and a sense that there's not a focus on any one particular thing or any effort for looking. Allowing yourself to just be present moment by moment beginning by feeling the sensations of the breath. Feeling the body receiving the breath, expanding maybe imagining this breath traveling to all the nooks and crannies of the body all the way out to the fingertips and the toes and feeling the sense of aliveness and on the exhalation sensing into this arriving releasing being here and now. Notice the overall feelings of the body. And if there's tension here and there, Allowing your awareness to acknowledge that presence, not pushing it away or holding on to it and inviting a sense of releasing with the out breath, if that's possible. We're invited to be mindful of the body at the beginning of meditation practice. We so often forget the body and travel around through our daily lives with the mind, leading and managing, controlling. So to take this time 
to acknowledge, to feel, to honor the presence of the body. And as the body settles, we may become more aware of the activity in the mind, actually. The stillness of the body offers us the opportunity that this may be arising and passing through the mind. And so often we come to meditation thinking it's all about getting still, being quiet, and getting rid of our thoughts. And yet the practice is all about noticing our thoughts, getting curious about the thought patterns getting to know a little bit more on how our mind works. And doing so with a sense of curiosity and allowing, letting go any judgment, and just being with whatever is showing up. Maybe with a sense of, of welcoming a friend. Maybe there's some difficulty that's showing up in the thought, in the mind. And may we invite the presence of kindness in our hearts, a welcoming of this too. This too is part of my experience. feeling a sense of compassion for the difficulty and allowing it to just be held and to be nurtured by the breath. And sensing into these thought patterns kind of in a way of titration. Noticing if they're pleasant, unpleasant or neutral. And just allowing them to be however they are. And maybe noticing their impermanent nature coming and going. And if you can, allowing yourself to recognize that they are not you. They are phenomena, objects, arising and passing. This activity that all human beings experience. And we have the choice to let them flow or to become attached.
If we hold on to anything that has the nature of change, we will suffer more than if we allow it to arise and to flow, not ignoring, not holding on to, not pushing away, just allowing and recognizing this is how it is right now. Can I be with how it is right now? And in the very act of, in this stillness and allowing to come and to go, there may be a sense of release of control, a sense of freedom from not being so attached. And rest in that place of letting be and noticing the arising and the passing of sensation and thought.
Noticing where the mind is now. Inviting your attention back to the breath. And sensing into the body, your presence in the here and the now. And I thank you for your practice. So maybe just taking a minute to integrate the feeling of being right where you are with your eyes closed. And the focus on meditation and then coming back into the presence of your space and to all of us here. So what I'd like to share and talk a little bit about this evening has it totally relates to Kind of what I've been working with this last week or so, um, and it's just really been a lot about my mind. My mind. Uh, my kids are grown and have moved out of the house, and so I have more alone time. And you know what that means? You're alone with your thoughts a little bit more. <laughs> and sometimes uh, we can have this sense of that being a dangerous neighborhood. I, <laughs> there's always that saying. And yet, it's it's um, so important for us to welcome ourselves to that realm of, of recognizing what's going on in our mind, what's going on, what um, and and it, are our thought processes stuck in harmful uh, negative thought patterns and distortions what's showing up is what's showing up in the mind is is it true is it helpful where um asking asking ourselves where am i getting caught and impossible you know repetitive um mind thought thought loops and even if they are thought loops even if the thoughts may be distorted or maybe they're joyful and they're happy, but can I just be with whatever's showing up and just recognize this is what's here right now. And if it's, you know, if, if it's in the realm of, of supporting well-being, then, you know, we have the sense of gratitude of, Oh, this is here right now. What a lovely experience. And can I be with that? And then, there's a sense of energetic emanating of that into the room wherever we are and to others if we're in close contact. And then if there's rumination, if there are these thought patterns that aren't so supportive, then um, where can I let go? Where can I let go? And how can I be responsible in making a choice about how I am in relationship with my thoughts? 
So, you know, probably most of us who are here, who are involved in recovery and uh, Dharma exploration and practices, I think we've probably become very familiar with how important it is to be able to take time and recognize regularly what's going on in the mind. And when we think about it, um, all of our speech and our actions emanate from the mind. That's where things kind of begin. And we've come into this space, most likely having made a choice that we want to or have let go of some major addictive patterns in our life, letting go, whether it's alcohol, drugs, um, internet addiction, food, sex, whatever it is, we've made a choice to shift these addictive behavior patterns. And when we do that, especially if we're if you're going through a 12 step uh, recovery program, we start to recognize that we uh, we've got these steps and we have to deal with our thoughts, right? We have to deal with our thoughts. It's not just about I quit. You know, I'm not doing this anymore and having a staunch, you know, tight grip with our our fist or, or our mind. We have to deal with our thoughts if we want to support these new new actions of choices. And if we want them to stick over the time, knowing that it's going to be, you know, everything's a winding way. Everything is a winding way. So through these ste- the, the 12 steps um, process, the 12 step process, if you're involved with that and our mindfulness practices, we start beginning to notice more our, our mind thoughts. And we can go to the next level of, is this thought pattern causing suffering or is this thought pattern increasing our well-being? Is it lessening suffering? And we get to uh, see that we can actually cultivate, we can cultivate these positive aspects of the mind. And this, this will support not only our, the wholeness of our well-being, but um, it will greatly support us as we are either embarking on or involved with or fully immersed in living a clean and sober life. And so there are many tools, many tools that we're offered that we can anchor into in this journey. And one I've been focused, I've been focusing kind of on two this last week and a half or so, and that has been kind of anchoring into the 10th step of, of um, the 12 step recovery process, continue to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. So this step is, you know, we come to this step after going through the first nine and in in four, we we did a lot of introspection and looking inward and seeing where where our actions and our thoughts were were not supportive for our well being. And we had to dig deep into our past. It was a huge project, right? Now after we've kind of done that and shared that and gone through some of the other steps, we come to the step 10 where we have the opportunity and it's suggested that we look at our daily life and do the cleanup now. Don't let it pile up again, you know? And that's a huge relief. That's a huge relief to, you know, if we can do that, we, we can be, we're inviting ourselves to be really present and to face with what what's going on in our life. So the step it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a step of ongoing self investigation of being honest and taking responsibility. And it's incredibly supporting, um, supportive for maintaining our daily awareness of how we are in relationship with our lives. And in essence, it's a mindfulness practice. So mindfulness practice, meditation, this is really my other anchor, my other uh, practice and tool that I've really been um, cultivating with more intention over these last couple weeks. So as we know, this is a Dharma and recovery um, um, focused meeting. And so when we look at Buddhism, we, we recognize that Buddhism promotes mindfulness as a mainstay of living a wholesome life. And in the suttas somewhere, I don't have the exact number or or place right now off the top of my head, but the Buddha is said to have said, if you do one thing in your life to enlighten your body and your mind, 
and to cultivate happiness, meditate. If you do one thing, meditate. And we know how hard that is for many of us, especially if we tend to be, you know, those AAA, you know, run battery run uh, bunnies. It's like to be still is a difficult thing. And then even for those of us who find it maybe even welcoming and maybe we come into meditation practice in the beginning kind of as as a as a getaway as a, you know, as an escape. Um, it can ha be hard too because our mind pops up. <laughs> And we can't escape our minds. We can't escape our minds. So all of this cultivation and this concentration, this focus, our formal practices of meditation, it's about training our mind to pay attention, to be present, to be able to invite ourselves to be fully present with whatever's showing up, moment to moment, sensation to sensation, thought by thought, emotion by emotion, and doing that without judging without judging. It's not about bad me, or I'm doing this wrong, or I can't stand this. When am I going to ever get this? It's about exploring this incredible phenomena of your being, your presence on this earth, right? We are each getting to know ourselves a little bit more every time we practice. We learn to recognize our patterns. And, and that's why, you know, sometimes you know, when we come into meditation, it's not about getting rid of the thoughts. Hey, let's take a look. Let's turn towards whatever's showing up. Be joyful with with the with with the uplifting um, thoughts and experiences and patterns that arise, and then also be willing to be with those things that are more difficult. And we get to see more and more clearly um, what it's all about. We start to notice that they are impermanent. All things are impermanent. A thought doesn't stay. It's not it doesn't stick. It doesn't have to. We can engage with it and keep it going for a long time. But part of our practices allow the nature of that ever changing thing to shift and change. It'll come back, most likely. But we are practicing letting go, allowing things to come up and then to go. And then in the, the state of this uh, self-examination, we see more clearly. We can start recognizing what are our harmful habit patterns of our thoughts, of our emotions, of our reactivity. And all these things hijack our well-being. So we're learning to let go of, uh, of fixed ideas of these hindering habit patterns of mind. And when we do that, the more and more we do that, the more we sense little releases into this feeling of freedom and relief and not having to carry that burden of attachment. So especially those of us who have minds that tend and lean towards addictive uh, processing, we get caught up a little bit more easily maybe than other other people. Um, and you know, they're, they're distortions, actually are, are they're, they're thought distortions, they're like, false beliefs or limiting beliefs, you know, some examples that we might have said to ourselves or do say to ourselves, I can't, I can't do this. I've failed. I'm not worthy. I need the craving's going to win. I'm right. You're wrong. These are things that go through our minds often. But do we need to be controlled by them? Do we see that they are merely thoughts that are coming through? And we don't have to get caught up in, in them and allow them to kind of control the show. So this also, you know, includes, includes other things like our ha habitual ruminations, you know, ruminating about the past. Um, having regrets. Um, our resentments can be pretty heavy in, in our recovery practices. We can get caught up in our fears and our judgments. So when we invite ourselves to kind of um, anchor into these times where we can just be still and start noticing what comes up, how it comes up, how we're in relationship with it, seeing the impermanent nature uh, of these things, then we get to take time and take the opportunity to be able to cultivate this 
this uh, muscle of checking in with where our minds and our hearts are. So this is kind of like an inventory of sorts, an inventory of sorts, taking time to pause. We get to sit and, and breathe and be with whatever it is that is causing tension or angst in our lives, this tight grip of wanting and, and controlling. We can pause. We can break this reaction of, you know, we've heard the term stinking thinking before. You know, just pausing gives us this opportunity to to say, wait, wait, wait. And we can remember that this is part of life. This is part of our addictive, you know, mind patterns. We're not alone. We have other people that we can talk to. We can share, you know, these struggles with. And we have a choice. This is where we take responsibility of what our next right action is. So we, you know, we're on this journey. We're on this journey of recovery with this um, um, sense of wanting. We we want and and desire is not horrible like we sometimes you know hear and and you know learn. Sometimes in Dharma talks we get this feeling just like you know you shouldn't think when you're meditating. Um, we we also kind of feel like um, that that we can't we can't control our thoughts but we can insert it's not control our thoughts i'm sorry we can't um control our thoughts but we can shift how we're in relationship with them and and that's that's what our journey is shifting our thought patterns and our and our attitudes and we can offer ourselves this uh, sense of kindness about it all you know letting go of the judgments and just recognizing this is where i am right now and can i can i be kind to myself as i'm i'm doing this exploration to acknowledge um our our human vulnerability and maybe even allowing ourselves to have a little bit of a softening heart and saying i'm just i'm doing this and i have a goal i want to live with more of a sense of well-being. I want to live clean and sober. I want to look at what my thought patterns are and, and to start being able to open ourselves up to seeing other possibilities, seeing other possibilities. In the stillness, we get to hear, you know, what's the next right thing? Not all the time, but it's there if we keep returning again and again. So we accept, we see, and we accept that life's not perfect. It's not perfect, and we're not going to change that. Nonetheless, we can, we can retrain our minds. We can learn, as they say, how to surf the waves of life. Uh, when I was young, I, I used to ride horses, and I had a horse trainer who said to me one time, he just reminded me, he said, it's not about the perfect jump. It's about how you ride the imperfect jump. This is what we're doing. We're training ourselves not to try to make everything perfect in our lives, but to really be present with what's showing up, with what's showing up and how we're, um, how we're in relationship to that. So prior to, prior to choosing this path of recovery from addiction, it seems that either knowingly or unknowingly, our thought distortions, these, these harmful habit uh, thought patterns, did rule our lives. They did. And these thoughts showed up in our um, physical, um, physical, physical expression, in our psychological, in our social. They showed up in, in, in all the ways we did the little and the grand things in our life. But when we come to the program, when we come to a realization that this is not working for me, I can't go on another minute like this. There is something wrong. And just maybe letting go of this addictive pattern may open up a possibility of another way of being on this planet. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So we choose to clean up our lives, to cultivate a caring life. We, we're choosing to care, right? I mean, if I think back about it, I guess I didn't care enough to do this earlier in my life. You know, wherever that point comes for us, we care enough to face our imperfections and we recognize that it's just part of the journey that we live in an, in, an imper imperfect world. We're not going to make the world perfect. 
but how can we um, navigate? We have, have the freedom to choose how we're going to engage with it all. And we do that in the present moment. And that's why my coming into a stillness, practicing meditation and mindfulness is so powerful because we get to learn to be right here, right now. Now is where our power is. It's not in the past and it's not in the future. It's right here. So bit by bit, we slowly get to, um, you know, instead of getting hooked, hooked, you know, by the, these hindrances that show up and, and, you know, we, they look like they're stumbling blocks and obstacles. We get to choose to face them and to, to be with and, and to grow from them. We choose, we're choosing self-investigation, honesty, and responsibility once again. So this is available to all of us. And this is what, you know, tapping into an inventory, daily inventory helps us um, do to see where our thought patterns are, because that's going to lead us to our next speech and to our next action. We're choosing to be on this earth with a sense of more uh, contributing to the well-being of ourselves and others, not to the suffering as we once were. So I'd like to... Um, uh, in Kevin Griffin's book, uh, the his workbook on the 12 um, steps in, in recovery, he says of step 10, I just want to offer this, step 10 can be practiced in many different ways as a daily ritual review of our behavior, as a quick acknowledgement of a mistake, as a meditative exploration of thought patterns and feelings or as an ongoing exploration of troubling themes that appear regularly in our lives. So we have this variety and, uh, of ways that we, we can just check in and see where am I now? How is it now? What's coming up? What, what's calling for attention and exploration and to be with and, and in an essence to be healed? Can we open ourselves up to that possibility? We're all worthy of that. So I encourage you as we move in to the weekend to, if you don't already, to, um, you know, make some time for step 10, for a little inventory, you know, at the end of the year day, kind of looking back. Or if something comes up and you're feeling a lot of tightness in your body or, or your mind, either in a conversation or a situation or even just with your own, your mind with your mind, um, taking some time to check in, to feel it, to see what's going on. And, um, and then to take time for some meditative practice as well. And as you're going throughout your day. I mean, once again, tapping in, we can bring this practice into the little bits and pieces of our day. And um, yeah, I just invite you to kind of bring that to the forefront if it feels good for you um, as you go go throughout the weekend and just notice your habit pattern, habit thought patterns. Are they wholesome or unwholesome? And what can you open up to for the antidote? Um, yeah. It's a personal journey, but we also do it together. So I thank you so much for your time. And um, that's what I have to offer for you this evening. And if you um, would uh, like to share anything or if you have any reflections, uh, we have some, we have a little time for that right now. So thank you very much. I'll share Debbie. Thank you very much. My name is Alex, and this is my first time here. And I just want to um, thank thank you so much and. Uh, this was a wonderful way to end my Friday evening and great thoughts. Uh, plan to do my 10th step tonight before I, when I'm done here and 
Um, I, I really like, um, I, I changed a little bit, but um, this idea of it's not about making life perfect. It's about how we ride the imperfect life. And I kind of switched it from the, from the riding the horse and I like that. Um, yeah. So I will be back and um, look forward to seeing you all again. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. We need to personalize, personalize things for our, our lives and yeah, I'm glad you got a little tidbit there. <laughs> okay. Well, I leave this for your contemplation. And if, if everyone is feeling kind of saturated with information at this moment, why don't we just take a minute here, uh, maybe a couple minutes, just to uh, sit with um, a little more silence and just uh, maybe absorbing or being with whatever is with you now. So let's just take a minute. And so as we come to a close, maybe sensing into a quality of grat gratitude for taking this time to cultivate and nourish mindfulness, cultivate and nourish journeys of recovery, gratitude for presence and also sensing into the generosity of your presence being here as a sharing with others as a support to others and may we dedicate the merit of our practice not only to ourselves and to each one of us here in this meeting this evening but to all beings, all beings everywhere. May all beings be safe. May all beings be well in body, mind, and in spirit. May all beings find happiness. May all beings be accompanied with peace and ease. And may all beings be free from the suffering of attachment. May all beings be free. Hmm. Thank you.